second. So you boys, Paul, go down that aisle. Sean, go up the middle. Dad, you go right there, and I'll go over here. And while we're doing that, y'all look at the video camera and just wave to it. Now, there is a problem to this. Anybody that shakes my hands is going to smell like a lobster because I cooked lobster before the show. We'd like to say that it's very uh, a wonderful privilege for us to be here tonight. To tell you the honest truth, I, I am a little bit nervous. <laughs> because, boys, if things go wrong, it's not going to be easy to get out of this building. <laughs> Real one. Real one? We traveled a long ways to <laughs> be with you people, and some of you were with us last night over, I call it Prince Albert. <laughs> Edward. <laughs> Prince Edward. Prince Edward Island. But we did have a great time over there. We'll be going back to Branson, Missouri when the show is over tonight. If we can get enough money together to get us there. been figuring up and it's been about 28 years that the boys and I've been together on the road traveling making a living at this started way back there when the boys mama was living you were old back then <laughs> <laughs> well son I'm older tonight the boys asked me one day, said, Dad, how do you know when you're getting older? I said, when you're laying in the bathtub, boys, and your body parts start to float. <laughs> Boy, I can tell, I can tell we're going to have fun tonight. Now, there's supposed to be a group of senior citizens in the audience tonight. Do you see any here? Where are you sitting? All right, let's let her go, boy. Just out of curiosity, how many of you was at Prince Edward last night with us? All right. Okay, so we got uh, boys. We're gonna have to tell something different tonight. 
All right, one more time. How about a nice hand for Goldwing Express? about it tonight. Yeah. Hope you like the way we do this. Music City lights keep shining down on me as I walk the streets of Nashville, Tennessee. Since my baby's gone, I'm lost as can be. Music City lights shine down on me. I thought I had a hat back in Ohio Thought my woman really cared for me She lured me into giving up the things that I love so I moved her down to Nashville Tennessee Then those music city lights began to shine on her Changed her from the girl I used to know The one who said I love you and the first place in your life I'll be yours wherever you may go. Music City lights keep shining down on me as I walk the streets of Nashville, Tennessee. Since my baby's gone, I'm lonesome. Asking me, Music City lights shine down on me. Give you a chance, boy. This is one of my big ones. Do it right. the 
see And though city lights begin to shine You'll find me walking all alone Or down on Broadway Trying my best to get her from my mind Music city lights keep shining down on me As I walk the streets of Nashville, Tennessee Since my baby's gone, I'm lonesome as can be Music city lights shine down on me Music city lights shine down on me Oh, don't give him too much applause. <laughs> well, you know, uh, singing that song, I couldn't keep from uh, remembering one of my favorites right out of Canada, Mr. Hank Snow. Went to Nashville when he was just a young boy, I guess, and uh, made his way through Nashville and had a lot of hits. But he was a great entertainer, and you know, I, I'm still learning some of his material. Hope you like this next one, boys, and let's let her go. It's good to have you boys on the live album tonight. We're going to do some songs uh, here this evening. How about uh, one of our original songs that we wrote? We always write our own material, and some of it we might uh, get it from somebody else, but here's a couple songs that we actually wrote. Here's the first one entitled Memories of Home. <laughs> Seven miles up from a canyon floor Nestled in a piney wood grove Stood an old log cabin and a run-down barn Forty-eight Chevy that my daddy once drove I came back here just a week ago Walked around the old home place Found the half-dug well that daddy had made Rusty old plow and a broken place. I know that time has gone forever. As a child, I would play all day. Still, I miss all my friends that I knew back then. And I wonder, are they all okay?
Uh, he's just playing around. Hey, boys, let's see if we can speed it up. Give us a little mandolin. This one right here, this is my oldest brother, Paul. He does a good job on that guitar. How about a nice hand for him? Now, me and old Paul, we grew up together. That's my oldest brother. We shared the same room, same, same bedroom and all that good stuff. And as a matter of fact, we shared the same bed coming up. Boy, I didn't know it was like to sleep alone until I got married. True now, I'm, I'm not telling you. I'm Boy, there at the house, we lived in Oklahoma. And that's Tornado Alley. Y'all get tornadoes up here. Don't get any. Boy, we get them down there, I'm telling you. It was thundering and lightning outside, boy. I mean, it was real stormy. Me and old Paul, now we was about five. I was about five years old, and I'm Paul, seven. he was about seven. So we got ready for bed one evening. I, I looked at old Paul, and it was thundering and lightning outside. And at that age, you know, you're real scared when you're growing up because we had a two-story house. Well, let's see, we had two mobile homes stacked on top of each other. <laughs> Boy, Paul, he got down there on the side of the bed on his knees. I got down there on the side of the bed on my knees. I said, Paul, what in the world are you doing? He said, the same thing you're doing. I said, you better not, because the pot's over here. <laughs> And the floor was slanted downhill. <laughs> Our baby brother right there, Sean, he plays a doghouse bass. He also sings good low notes. You're going to hear him tonight. How about a nice hand for Sean right there on the bass? <laughs> and believe it or not, the fellow on the mandolin, well, this is our daddy. Uh, 
Go ahead, give him a hand. That's Pop. Do we look like him? No? Thank you. Thank you. But this is our daddy right here. Boy, he's getting old, too. Now, every year, every year on the road, he gets worse and worse and worse. Now, I know what will happen when we get back to Branson, because we'll be back in Branson in, in a couple of days. It took us 40 hours to get over here. That's a long ways. Now, we'll drive straight through. People want to know, how do you guys get, get around when we drive the bus? We don't have a bus driver. All four of us drive. And I know what exactly will happen. After a 40-hour road trip, we'll get there at Dad's house. We won't even bother going home. We'll just stay all night there at his place. We'll be too tired to go home. Just to give you a little example, a couple weeks ago, got there at Pop's house and he was it was so late at night boy he had been he had been away from his wife for so long well I didn't even bother going anywhere I just went upstairs and went to bed I started getting thirsty through the night I came down the stairway and I came around the corner I caught dad and his brand new pair of hot lips making out on the couch <laughs> well you're talking about sick now but I guess he's getting old after what I heard his wife say. She said, Bob, you want to walk upstairs and make love? <laughs> he said, oh, honey, I can't do both. <laughs> this one right here on the Dobro. Started him when he was 10 years old, picking the banjo. Oh, when he was about 18, you tried to become a man, didn't you, boy? I mean, he was trying to do everything grown adults were doing. I remember early one morning, I walked in the bathroom, caught you shaving. Remember that morning? I remember. Cut both of your legs. Stephen Joseph, that's my middle-aged son. Thank you. How did he get there? He put it there. Being a rattlesnake, son, it'll bit you. Hey, man, what do y'all do to make money up here? Is this a lot of farming? Is oh, they do everything up here. Agriculture, a lot of that stuff. Well, the, if anybody out here made a living as a farmer, we're going to do your song right now and have. They that. work for a living up here. <laughs> Us down in the United States, we have to have a stimulus package. <laughs> Hey, we're going to do your song. <laughs> Somebody said something. We're, we're going to dedicate this to the farmers. Anybody here make a living at farming? All right, this is dedicated to you. Hope you enjoy it. Farmer's Blues. Who'll buy my wheat? Who'll buy my corn? To feed my babies when they're born. Seeds and dirt, a prayer for rain that I might use. I work the land, I watch the sky, talk to God and wonder why. But it's the only life I know. The farmer's blue. I see the seasons come and go, sending rain, fire, and snow. I'm at the mercy of it all, this life I choose. Sometimes I hang my head and cry when that evening rain goes by.
pictures, all oh, the fences down. Put on my suit and go to town. Ask for a loan when I know they will refuse. The one I love is back at home. A worried look and all alone, but waits for me to love away the farmer's blue. I see the seasons come and go, sending rain, fire and snow. I'm at the mercy of it all, this life I choose. Sometimes I hang my head and cry when that evening train goes by. Wish it could take me far away. a wonderful audience tonight. Boys, I wouldn't mind taking this bunch back with us. Oh, wouldn't it be great? Hey, they could, they could furnish all the diesel. I don't know, boys, if Hot Lips and me is going to get to hang together or not. Having marriage problems, huh? I didn't know it till the other the morning I got in from trying to sell a vacuum cleaner. Whoa. I'm working two jobs. What? You I sell vacuums? I told some of them last night over at the other location about my second occupation. Yeah, I'm selling vacuum cleaners. Boy, I bet that job sucks. <laughs> I knocked on a woman's door at about 6 o'clock. Is that 6 o'clock a.m.? In the morning. I believe as the ugliest woman, boys, I've ever seen. But nobody looks good at 6 in the morning. No. I knew it was early when I took one look at her. <laughs> that woman was so ugly, she scared me so bad, I forgot to tell her who I was. I went around her as quick as I could. Went inside, started my demonstration. $3 million mobile home. Throwed 50 pounds of horse manure from one end to the other. Manure? Manure? I looked at her with one eye. That's all I could take at a time. I said, lady, I built this vacuum cleaner. If it don't pick up every drop of that horse manure, I'll eat it myself. She took me right straight to the kitchen, boys. She said, would you like to use a fork and a spoon? I said, why in the world would you ask me such a question? She said, I just moved in here yesterday. I ain't got no electricity. <laughs> I think you'll recognize this. Well, I've been lonesome. I've been empty. I've got an aching way down inside. I need someone, someone to hold me. Pull down the shade, turn out the lights, and love me tonight. We don't think about tomorrow, it don't matter anymore. We can turn the key and lock the world outside the door. Well, I need you so now, come on, let go now. 
Kick off your shoes, turn out the lights and love me tonight. Yeah. baby boy right there. No, I tell you what, I never, I never, huh? I heard Hot Lips was fixing to leave you. Oh, I don't think we're going to make it, buddy. Well, the other morning when I came in. You better do something to keep her. I mean, well, she she's a high dollar rolling woman from Maryland. <laughs> if you've ever heard of that foreign country. High maintenance. Oh, takes a lot of money to keep her going, buddy. The other morning at 6 o'clock, I came in. 6? Again? Oh, she wanted to stay in one of them big, fancy, high-dollar motels down there in Branson, Missouri. Where they keep the light on. <laughs> nice. Some of them didn't get it, boys. <laughs> this old boy did here. He stayed in them before. <laughs> She's really a high roller, huh? I was getting ready to get on the elevator. Some guy walked up behind me, tapped me on the shoulder. He said, hey, pal, I've made love to every woman in this building except one. Bragging? You mean bragging about it? Yes, he was. What's the matter with that guy? I said, what'd you say? He said, I've made love to every woman in this building but one. No jerk. class, man. What a jerk. Jerk. I didn't get on the elevator. I jumped on the stairs and beat the elevator up to where Hot Lips and me was staying a few nights. We was on the third floor. She's still up. I walked to the back. I said, hey, Hot Lips, there's a janitor down there bragging about making love to every woman in this building except one. What a jerk. The nerve of him. She said, I bet it's that snooty old Mrs. Johnson on the next floor up. <laughs> Son, let's do a little full part harmony tonight, okay? We haven't had harmony in the family in quite a while. <laughs> You're looking at one big family, not one big happy family. <laughs> These boys and me, this is our first experience. Now, I hope there's <laughs> nobody gets offended at this Don't because. Don't say it then. <laughs> Just stop right there. But it seemed like you folks sort of appreciate this style of entertainment just a little bit more than they do over Montreal. <laughs> a 
We've been over in Montreal and Quebec, and uh, it's a beautiful place to see it and then leave. <laughs> but now, I wouldn't mind living in this part of Canada, boys. This is wonderful. This is great. Hope you enjoy this. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in and gave a little life from heaven, filled my soul, made my heart in love, and he wrote my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus makes me whole. Tell him all about our troubles And he will hear our faintest cry And he will answer by and by And when you hear a little prayer returning You will know a little fire is burning You will find a little talk that Jesus makes it Watches day and night. I go to him in prayer. He knows my every care. And just a little talk with Jesus makes the way. Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. He hear our faintest cry. And he will answer by and by. And when you do a little prayer and turn, you will know a little fire is burning. We'll find a little talk with Jesus makes the right. to hear a song called Woe Mule Woe.
Slow gallop. Can you make that mule start really bucking? Speed him up. Yeah, let's make him really start bucking here. Put the saddle on him, boys. You boys better rear it up, because we're fixing to put the heat to it. Put the spurs to him. Yeah! Yeah! gonna do them a song that we picked up I love this song is it a love song no this is another song about mules now I know there have been somebody here that's surely been on a wagon train and we're gonna sing about it tonight now each one of us has a special part except the boy on the Martin guitar he hadn't figured anything out He's kind of slow. In fact, he's, in, he's not the sharpest knife in the drawer. We, put, we play all kinds of uh, music shows across the country. We play festivals, events like this. Churches. Uh, we'll play churches. We'll play... Uh, Gambling casinos. Everything. We stopped over here. We was playing at Foxwoods Casino down south of here before we got up here. He ain't never going again, I can tell you that. I'm not taking him. Look at him. You can tell by looking at him, he ain't very smart. <laughs> well, I mean, after all, who do you know that carries a roll of toilet paper to the craps table? <laughs> well, son, the kind of women you've had in the past, I wouldn't say a lot. Don't talk about my women, buddy. What, what about that with? last wife you had? Remember how ugly she was? I'd say she had a butter face. Butterface. Everything looked good, butter face. Show me your parts. All right, son. We're going to take you on a trail ride. Now, here's my favorite part right here. I like mine because it's the easiest. Can you do it? Uh, yeah, I think so. Now I've got mules back in Missouri. That's the slower mule right there. How about you, boy? You know anything about a trail ride, wagon yeah. train? Yeah. This happens on them. What's yours? Wagon train, my 
long train. Yeah. Four hundred mules, six hundred men. They didn't know the devil was in this mile long train. Wagon train. Yeah. Get up, the man in black. The devil for sure leading that train. Where's he going? He said, All oh, you miners, you skinners, too. In 15 days, I'll pay for you. You see that plane? Take you across ha, ha, ha. if you dare. Wagon train, my long train. Four hundred mules, six hundred. <laughs> they didn't know <laughs> the devil was in this my long train. Wagon train. Play the guitar, boy. Sound like a chihuahua. It up, she's just weak. <laughs> Oof, woo. Hey. Hey. Now, the only way out was the way they went in, and the shift in sand covered tracks where they'd been. So, one by one, they all died of thirst. And the devil just laughed ha, ha, ha. at his mile-long hearse. That's where the name Death Valley began. For there's no way out, only one way in. Wagon train, mile-long train. Yeah. 400 mules, 600 men. <laughs> they didn't know the devil was in this mile train. Wagon train. Mile long train. Mile long train. One more time, lady. <laughs> Wagon train. <laughs> Say you know, you remind me. <laughs> Ain't got time. Ain't got time. Is a sound man here? Yeah. Sir, are you here? <laughs> Could you run up here real quick? I need a longer cord. I had a longer one than this when I was born. Last night, you made me think of that. And Prince Albert, Prince Edward, P E I. You know that class you flunked in school, P E. A lady walked up and said, I'd like to give you something as a gift. I walked outside and she took it out of the car. What was it? Chihuahua. <laughs> I hate those little bug eyed looking weird old creatures. Gotcha. 
They're a teenage mutant ninja puppy. Always snapping up at the seat of your britches when you got your back turned. You know what they look like, boys? They look like a Doberman pincher with air let out of them. I looked at her, I said, do you really think I need a mouse that's been fed steroids? But I took it. Reminds me a few years ago when the boy's mama was living. Steve's little girl came up, wanted me to buy her one. I saved all of my money. It was for her birthday. I never could get enough money to buy her old chihuahua. You see, I play bluegrass. But I did buy her a young one. Took it home. She was so excited. She said, Papa, let's call him Spot. I said, honey, there ain't enough dog there. We better call him Speck. At that time, there was a tornado came through Oklahoma. That's where we were living then. Did about $20,000 worth of improvements. <laughs> Tore up every outhouse in town. <laughs> every morning, Speck, Steve's little daughter, and my wife and me, we'd go for a ride to see what was being built. I could see Speck like it was yesterday, jumping in the back seat, trying to look out over the glass. But he was so short he couldn't see what was being built. So I had to describe to him. I thought I was doing well till one morning the boy's mama pointed out, said, Bob, did you know that dog's Mexican? <laughs> the rest of you get it tomorrow. She said, I don't think I don't think he's understanding the words you're saying. So I made a fast trip to Walmart. Picked him up some suction cups. <laughs> Put him on his feet and stuck him to the back glass. <laughs> hey, he could ride up there for hours. He'd get a little bit nervous when I'd go to roll the back glass down. But it was only because I had him riding on the outside. We still got that dog. What's left of him? <laughs> Won't be long, boys. Go home and play with him. We can go back and play with him. It's not easy to play with a dog you can kill with a frisbee. <laughs> hey, we'll take this great big long check. <laughs> Is Joe paying us? He paid us last night. <laughs> we'll take it back to the bank. I know they got him up here. They got what? I left to take spec to the bank. You know them little suction tubes that runs through the bank? You ought to see his eyes bug out when I put him inside of one of them. <laughs> It, didn't you? <laughs> but the women's got to where they don't want to see me coming. You see, Speck is just like you or me. Every time he goes into the bank, he thinks he ought to leave a deposit. How about a hand for our daddy? Our daddy. Our daddy. Our daddy. Our daddy. Our daddy. <laughs> That song or that, that story there goes out to my two friends that are on the 
they're actually right there in front of that tripod camera back there. Uh, <laughs> they own two little chihuahuas. <laughs> 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 that was for them right there. I hope y'all enjoyed that. Um, right now, we're going to sing something and dedicate it to the pretty ladies yeah, yeah. that are represented here this evening. Oh, yeah. And I'd like for Sean to step up to the mic and take control of this stage. Can you do it? Look at the women. They're all in here. Makes you homesick, don't it? Yeah, I miss my wife. I shaved my left leg. That way I think I lay, was laying next to her at night. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one, wasn't it? <laughs> I'm glad I'm not married tonight, boys. Uh, Hot lips is, but I'm not. <laughs> Now's the time to take them back to some good old country music. I'm going to take them to the year that when I first seen this gentleman was in the year of 1993. And it was backstage at Mickey Gillies Theater in Branson, Missouri. My oldest brother down there says, Sean, you've got to go see this man sing. And I was like, well, who is it? And he said, just go watch him at Gillies Theater. Well, I had a friend that I knew, and of course, you know, as being entertainers, we had access to backstage. And he, he told me something that night. He said, you've got to learn, if you're going to do this for a living, sing love songs. And I said, why well, love songs? <laughs> He said, well, I'll just show you why. I won't tell you, I'll show you. Hey, be more professional, man. Where's your dignity, man? Where's his dignity? Where's your dignity? Him, him and his woman, they split up again, Dad. Well, we had words before we left. I didn't get a chance to use mine, though. We split up for sure. I, she said we'd. She said we'd get back together in third.